In this video, we are going to learn about the so-called scoping rules that are involved when calling a function. So to do that, let's create a new file and rename it into scoping rules. Okay, so let's um, revisit the function that we de developed in the last video. So um, the idea is that we go back to the very first example of this course. We are given a list of numbers and we want to find the average of all the even numbers. Okay, so let's write a function for that. And if you want the, the details, just go one video back. But in this um, video, we are just going to write down the function as it is. So we use the def statement, give the function the name average evens. The function takes the parameter list and we call the parameter simply integers. Then we are going to write a so-called doc string using the triple double quotes notation. So we're going to write a subject line, calculate the average of all even numbers in a list. Then we are going to specify um, the parameters the function takes. It's going to be an integers uh, parameter and integers should be a list of int. So we also specify what data type uh, the function expects. And these are just the whole numbers to be averaged. And then the function returns simply the average as a floating point number. And then we have to write down uh, the code. So what we're going to do inside the function indented by four spaces. is so we're going to develop a list comprehension as we saw previously. And we say we keep n for n in integers if n modulo divided by two is equal to zero. So in other words, if n is, e, uh, is uh, um, even, and we assign that to a variable called evens. Um, so we always want to give um, our lines in the code uh, a descriptive name and using a, a good descriptive variable name is the best way to do that. In the next step, we go ahead and we calculate the average as the sum of all the evens using the built-in function uh, sum and also the built-in function len for the number of uh, even uh, numbers. And then we must not forget to write down um, the return statement. So the function has to return something back, so to say the output of the function. And we simply go ahead and we will write return average. If we don't uh, write down the return average, then the function is not going to return anything back. And um, that means the function does some calculation, but we don't get any result back. That, that would be not so good. So let's um, define the function. And now let's also go ahead and create a list uh, called numbers. And let's assign to that the numbers we are basically always using. So the numbers are 7, 11, 8, 5, and 3. Uh, 12, 2, and 6, 9, 10, 1, and 4. So these are all the numbers from 1 through 12 uh, without any particular order. And now we simply can go ahead and call our own function by simply writing its name, average evens. We use tab completion if we don't want to uh, type all the characters. Then we put down the um, call operator, open closing parentheses, and then we have to give the function an argument. So what we put in when we call the function is called an argument. Uh, that, that is why it says args here. But from within the function, when we define it, uh, refer, we refer to integers as the formal parameter. So we are going to give the function numbers as the argument for the parameter integers. And the function gives us back 6.8. And that means I must have forgotten some number. And indeed, um, if I watch closely here, we forgot the number eight. So let's go ahead and we get back 7.0. That also reminds us that um, we should always call our function with input for which we know the output in our head so that we can actually check if our uh, function is free of any semantic errors. Okay, so um, that is uh, how we specified the function. And now we are, of course, interested in the so-called scoping rules that regard the function. So let's maybe uh, also create a nice title here, the scoping rules. And the scoping rules, what they do is they concern when variables are visible. Okay, so Basically, let's simply write that down. When is a variable visible? That is the, the question we are going to answer um, in, in this video. So 
we have a name called average events and, and obviously we can uh, refer to it. So uh, when we type average events, average events is found. The same holds true for numbers. However, if we go ahead and let's say outside the function. So after I executed the function, let's say I want to refer to the variable called events, then we get a so-called name error. This is a, uh, an example of a runtime error. So you always want to remind yourself what three kinds of errors there are. So there's one group, which is syntax errors. The code will never ever run. We will always get a red error message. For runtime errors, the code is syntactically correct. So it should work. However, um, given the circumstances of the running program, um, some error occurs. And in this case, by simply writing down events, Python knows what to do. However, the name events has not yet been created. So that is why this is, uh, uh, belongs to the category of runtime errors. And then the third kind of error, uh, just to remind you, is the, the, the group of the semantic errors, which we can only check uh, by looking at the input-output relationship of a function. So now we have, as we see, a name error. Python does not know what events is. So, however, we define events, so that may look weird for some of us, but there seems to be a pattern, and the pattern is the variable is defined within the body of the function, and therefore um, it is not visible in the outside world. Okay, let's confirm that by also asking Python, hey, uh, do you know what the variable average means? And uh, also here, Python says, well, um, it's, an, um, it's a name error. And then we must not forget the formal parameter. So uh, remember in the last video, I purposely gave um, the, uh, the parameter the name integers and not numbers so that we have a different name for it just to, to make a point and integers the formal parameter that uh, lives within uh, the function uh, also does not exist here. Okay, so if I ask Python, hey, what if integers, we also get a name error. So both all the um, temporary variables set inside uh, the function while it is being executed, but also the parameters are not visible outside the function. That means after the function call um, has been made and also, of course, not after the function has been defined. Okay, so the question is, how should we think of uh, the life cycle of these names? Okay, and um, let's do that. Let's talk about that using a memory diagram. So when we define the function, what is going on is we are going to create an object with some code in it and the code are simply ones and zeros, okay? So we, we don't have to really care how this is exactly uh, modeled here, but there are ones and zeros inside the object and that basically resembles the code that we just defined in the function. The function has a certain type and uh, we saw that the type is function. Um, we could also uh, go ahead and confirm that by uh, simply asking the question here, what is the type of average events? And we see that the type is indeed a function, okay? So this is why I put the type function here. And then we have a name and the name is called average even. So that is, as we see in the list of all the names that are available, we have a name average even, and that refers to the object that contains the code. So this is what happens after we define the function, okay? So, so far uh, in my memory diagram, we have not yet executed a function, okay? And now, we see what's going to happen um, if we execute the function. So let's uh, go ahead. So as we execute this function, what's going to happen is as follows. Python creates a new area on the left-hand side where all the names are stored. And this basically belongs to this function. So maybe uh, we can go ahead and um, make a orange arrow here just to uh, show that this area on the left hand side in the memory um, belongs to the function. Okay, and now what's going to happen is as we pass in the numbers argument, maybe let me also uh, put the numbers argument in the memory. So let's have a list object. We, remem we remind ourselves what list lo uh, objects look like in memory. So list object are just those big chunks that uh, hold references to other objects, which are the numbers. I only uh, draw them here very small, just to remind yourself. And here's a variable, let's call it numbers, because this is also uh, there in our application here, in our, in our example. But as we see numbers, it lives outside the area with all the local 
um, names uh, to the function. And now, as the function is being executed, so in other words, as we go ahead and execute this uh, code cell here, average events, and we call it with numbers as the argument, that is when Python goes ahead and creates the parameter name called integers and um, makes that refer to the same list that we pass in as the argument, okay? So this is what happens when the, the call starts, okay? At the very beginning, before any code inside the function here, any code runs. So the only thing that has basically happened so far um, is we created a new space um, in memory and we re refer to these spaces as namespaces. That is a rather simple term. And we write in there all the parameters that the function defines. And now what we do is the arguments or the inputs to the function, they are given to the function only as references. Okay, so remember the video, uh, who am I and how many, um, showed you how um, I could actually try to fool you by giving uh, two names to um, the same list. And then we changed the list via one variable and we saw the changes via the other one. And maybe back then in this other video, you thought, okay, that's maybe a theoretical. Why would I care about this? Well, as we see, every time we call a function, um, we quite naturally have two references to one object, to the same object, okay? So there's always a reference to the object outside the function and one of them inside the function, okay? And then as the function continues to run, so what then happens is the, the first line in the function is going to run, the right-hand side is going to eva be evaluated and that will, be, uh, will create a new list object with only even numbers. And then once that is done, that new list object is assigned to the uh, variable called events. So let's go ahead and see what happens. After the first line is done, somewhere in memory, we get a second object, also a list object. So maybe let, let me write list here and here as well. And this second list object also has the number, has um, references to the integer objects. And now here we only have even numbers. So that is why the, the second list object should be a little bit smaller than the first one, okay? Assuming that we have even and odd numbers in here and here we only have even numbers. So the second list object will be smaller. And then what's going to happen is Python will go ahead and will create a new name called events inside the namespace that belongs to the function and we'll make that reference this list object. Okay, so this is what happens um, after the first line has been executed in the function. And now we go on and we create, we execute the second uh, line in the function body. And what this is going to do in this example, um, after the len and the, uh, the sum and the len functions have been executed and they are the results are divided, we get an, a result and the result obviously is the number 7.0 in the example. And this is of course of type float. And we will create then a new name in the namespace called simply average. And this is going to refer to this object. Okay, that is what happens um, after the second line in the function has been executed. And now let's continue. And now comes the last line in the function, the return line, the return average line. And so now what this is going to do it's going to do the following. It is going ahead and it will take, so the return statement takes one expression and the expression happens to be just uh, the variable, a reference to the variable average. So in other words, let me use a different color. Um, Python will go ahead and will take the reference to the 7.0, I mark it as in red here. And this is going to be the only thing that survives after the namespace goes away. So that is what happens after the function is done. The entire namespace and everything that is inside it will be removed from the left-hand side where we find all the names, okay? And then, as we have learned in a previous video, all the objects that have no reference going to them will be eventually collected by the garbage collector. And that, of course, means that the intermediate uh, list object called events with only the even numbers, that is of course gonna go away. This is going to be garbage collected sometime. Maybe not immediately, but at some point in time, this will be removed. And the only thing that survives is the 7.0.
Okay, and of course also maybe just to be very precise, the reference to the uh, outer numbers list will also be removed. And now the question is, um, what happens to um, the, the name average and the reference to the 7.0? So this depends, it depends here on what we do in the code. So what we did here is I simply called the function and I did not, I did not assign the result to anything. But let's assume I assigned the result to a variable, let's call it simply result. So now the, the, re the return value will be assigned to a variable called result. And let's now see in the memory diagram what that would do. Well, what that would do is that would create a new variable called result, of course. And result is going to reference whatever average reference before, which is the 7.0. And of course, the name average is also going away. However, the reference to that, that was under this name, this is basically the only thing that survived um, after this namespace uh, goes away, okay? And now um, we uh, already saw in Python Tutor, the online tool that we also use uh, to um, draw memory diagrams in an automated way. Um, they, on the left-hand side, where, they, where we say names, they also call that frames. And the reason is, because this namespace is also called a frame in technical terms, okay? And there's also one frame that is also uh, always available, or always visible, and that is um, what we call the global frame. And the global frame are basically all the names that are not within a namespace. So in that case, the name average events, result and number, these are the global names, and they are available, they are visible everywhere, okay? So let's... Um, summarize uh, what we found or what we learned so far. So the first rule, there will be three different scoping rules. So the first rule, so let's call it rule one. Um, I simply uh, call the rule local scope goes away. And that is what we saw in the memory diagram, okay? In the memory diagram, the so-called local scope, so all the variables that are local to only one function call, they will be removed automatically after the function call is over, okay? So that is what we mean with the local scope, local to one function. And the local scope goes away after the function um, is done. Now, let's um, look at a couple of other, um, of other um, uh, scoping rules. So let's go ahead and do something that you shouldn't do. So let's go ahead and I will go ahead and I will copy paste the function as we, um, as we um, created it to a new code cell. And let's call it for now, average wrong. So I will create a second uh, function and let's make on purpose an error here. So note how we have a parameter called integers here, but let's say for um, reason for copy for a simple copy paste error, for example, what we are going to do is, instead of calling this parameter here integers, or instead of referring to integers, let's simply refer to numbers. And let's go ahead and call the function average events or average wrong, gave it a, a new name, and let's pass to the function our, um, as the argument, the numbers list. And the function gives back 7.0. So it looks like the function is correct, okay? However, Let's uh, do the following. Let's call the function again a second time. And this time, let's give it a new list object that we create on the fly. And let's put in there the numbers 40, 41, 42, 43, and 44. And that should give us back the result 42.0. But we get, get back still 7.0. And the reason maybe now um, has, has now become probably obvious to some of you. So within the function, I want to, or I should refer to the parameter, the input of the function as integers. However, I mistakenly uh, called the name or refer to the name numbers. Numbers is not an official input to the function. It's not on the parameters list. However, numbers, the variable, lives outside the function. Namely, up here, I created a global list. So numbers is a global name, right? It, it can be seen everywhere in the, in the memory. And therefore it can also be seen from within the function. And that is something very bad because that means 
the function, this function, the average wrong function, is now um, dependent on a variable living in the outside world or not. So in other words, um, if this name w were not to exist, so for example, let's call it numbers2, just to illustrate a point, it does not cause an error when I define the function. However, when I now go ahead and call the function, I get a name error because numbers2 does not exist, because numbers2 does not live in the outside world. But numbers, uh, without the two, that lives outside, and therefore the function tries to find numbers from within the function. It does not find it, and then it goes one level up to the outer level, to the global level, and sees that numbers exist and uses these numbers. Okay, so going back into our uh, diagram, what that means is when we are when we, once we created the local scope with all the variables local to the function, um, the function still tried to look up the, way, the the name numbers. It does not find it inside here, but then it goes to the outer level and finds numbers here and uses it. And in this uh, scenario, in the example I gave you here, this is as we saw as we said an uh, an error because. Every time we call this function, we are referring to the same list. So even if I give the the, uh, the function a wrong a, another list as the input, the function will still work with the numbers list. It will always work with the numbers list, and that's of course wrong. And um, so now, uh, for that kind of uh, situation, I have a second rule. I say uh, global scope is everywhere. That is uh, how I call the rule. So in other words, all the variables that are defined outside, they are always visible and can be used from within the function. However, it's a, uh, it's a bad practice to do that. Functions should only depend on parameters that we explicitly specify. And it should not, a function should not depend on anything else. Otherwise, the function, yeah, it may work in some situations, it may not work in others where the outside name does not exist. Okay, so always make sure that you specify all the param parameters, all the input to the function as parameters up here. And then within the function, you only use names that are either on the parameter list or created within the function. So of course, in the second line, the variable events I can use, right? Um, because I created it one line above. That is of course okay to do, but don't use a name that is outside. And now let's look at the third example to finish uh, this video. Let's go ahead and uh, take one more time the, the correct uh, version, average evens, and copy paste it to another cell one more time. And now let's do the following. I will go ahead and I will rename the parameter integers into numbers. Okay, so numbers exist outside in the global scope, and it is also now a parameter in the parameters list. And of course, I must not forget to also rename it here. So let's rename integers here also into numbers. And let's just uh, to be complete here, call that average evens final. That's our it's going to be our final version in this video. So now let's go ahead and call average evens, the final, um, the final function, call it. And let's give to it as the argument, the, the numbers list that lives outside. And I get back 7.0. And now let's um, do the same thing again. It's called average evens final now with a new list and let's give it the numbers 40, 41, 42, 43, and 44. And for the, these numbers, the average should be 42.0. Let's see if it, if it works and it, indeed it does. Okay, so what do we learn from this last example? We learn that if we have colliding names, so we have a parameter inside the function called numbers and we have also still a global variable that we defined up here, a global numbers variable, and they both exist at the same time, and Python is able to tell them apart. We see that with the second function call here, right? Because if uh, Python were not able to tell these two numbers names apart, then we would get 7.0 here as well, but we don't. We get the correct um, answer of 42.0. And th that is an example of the third rule of scoping. And that is what I simply refer to as the shadowing rule. So in other words, um, if a name exists on, at an inner scope, for example, in the local scope of the function, and also the same name exists in the outer scope, in, in the global scope here, then from the, what Python will do is it will look up the names from within first. So in other words, let's uh, go back to the memory diagram one more time. So what this, pro what this means 
and I'm a little bit out of space here, so but let me do the following. Let's say Python goes ahead and creates a new scope here for the function call and puts in there, for example, the parameter numbers. And then what we have is we have numbers within a local scope, within a, within a, a frame, but also in the global scope. Okay, and uh, what, what Python then does is it first looks from the inside out and once it uh, finds the inner uh, variable, it uses it and it does not use the outer one. And that means the inner variable numbers shadows um, the outer one. Okay, so in other words, the outer one we cannot see because it's, so to say, in the shadow of the, of the inner one. Okay, so function, so variable lookup in Python occurs from the inside out. So these are the, 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 the scoping rules, three of them, and um, you should uh, get used to them because um, not knowing that um, will create uh, many, uh, many potentials for confusion, especially for beginners. So make, your, make sure um, you understand that and also make sure that you know uh, what's going on here. Okay, see you in the next uh, video.